Hello, and welcome to Geeks Assemble Audio Heads. For this Sunday, we're reviewing the fifth installment of Jago and Lightfoot's uh, post Doctor Who appearances in a box set number five with, uh, with some recurring characters and some brand new characters uh, and some definite throws to the, the 60s. And considering the whole thing actually is part of the 60s. It is. And um, I loved, uh, I love the, the, that, you know, the two, our two leads, our two, two intrepid leads are, are just, they're so amazing in this. And it's got, uh, it has some, some wonderful, wonderful people in it. It's populated by um, uh, the, the, this family, um, the, the family of, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, the family of the, um, your name. Uh, just a second. I will look over here one moment, please. Yeah, the the family of uh, of Guinevere Godiva and um, Aubrey and some other people, Thomas Bloodchild, and that's what it is, the, the Bloodchild family. I'm sorry, gosh. And, and, and it's just it's just amazing the the interesting thing that happens in the in this uh, <coughs> and um, it stars you know Christopher Benjamin and um, and Trevor Baxter and Lisa Bowerman and another fantastic cast of of like 10 people and um and the the interesting uh character is and their and their relation to this time travel experience um of jago and lightfoot the last time jago and lightfoot were together they were on, out in space out in venus i think it was and this time it's all you know how they survive in the 60s and what happens to the palace theater basically and that's uh you know how they survive in the 60s it, that's been done a lot they were there was a great uh stargate episode which was all about the the stargate people being stuck in 1969 and so that was great fun and this one was great fun because it was uh how these uh these wonderful people um, our, our heroes get stuck in the 60s and what that's like. I think it's 1960. Um, no, what, what, when is it? 1968? 68, 68, 68, yeah. Um, and so say, uh, what's your, what's your opening thoughts, Lee? Well, yeah, uh, previously to this box set, they went on two special adventures with the Sixth Doctor. And on returning them back to Earth, the Doctor dro drops them off in the wrong decade. Uh, or wrong century as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, he drops them off in the 60s. Um, and for me, it doesn't work as well. It's no, no Victoriana. No, oh, I, 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 I didn't think of that, but yeah, that's that's all you. Yeah, uh, uh, Jago and Lightfoot are a Victoriana. Yeah. Um, I can't knock their performances because the characters are there. They're all fleshed out. But setting them, putting them in for these four adventures in the 1960s just didn't gel with me. It just, uh, it, it just didn't do it for me. Okay. It, it didn't ring true. I mean, it's science fiction, but I'm just saying it, 
they worked better back in the Victorian age. Yeah. Um, I mean, making Jago a TV presenter. And, um, and then uh, Ellie was a, was a pub owner. Ellie was still a pub owner, still alive, over 100 odd years old, because she's a vampire. Yep. Um, because of the what happened in box set number two, I think it was. Um, yep. But to yeah, make make Professor Lightfoot a bookshop owner um, in the sixties. Uh, I don't know. It just didn't gel because of all, all the sixties references. Didn't work for me with Jay Gun Lightfoot. Okay, the stories were that they were trying to live as best they can with all this future knowledge, what they didn't know anything about. But as I said, to make Jago a TV presenter, okay, yes, he was a MC at the Palace Theatre, but to make him some, you know, someone who was in front of a camera on the TV, I don't know, it, it just didn't do it for me. Um, the stories, the themes of the stories were good. It's just the setting. What I, what niggles me. Thankfully, thankfully, it, it was just for four stories. Because I say at the end of the fourth one, the the get back to wherever. You know, where. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They uh, found the time the time closet, and and they jumped back. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, there was exper- the, the, the writers, the big finish was ex- experimenting with with this. Yeah. Um, and there were four could, different writers with four different styles, of course. Yeah. Um, very different styles. And there was, I would say, two out of the four, I, I did like the themes of the stories. The other two, not so keen. Which ones were which ones were you? Uh, did you like the most? The, which I liked, the... liked story two, the case of the gluttonous guru. Uh huh. With the uh, the the, with, cr- the creature that that eats you out from out from the inside. Yes, the toad. That, that was because uh, you had Jago being um, controlled by what was growing inside him. Um. And then the, the other one was the last one, the final act. Yeah. Because you sort of got the references from Talons of Wing Chiang. So many it's, references from the... T- t- I mean, even even there was uh, the... Not Mr. Sin, but the other one. Mr. Sin, Magnus Greel. Magnus Greel, that's, what, that's right. Magnus Greel. Yeah. And you, you got the sort of feeling that, that he w- he had not, you know, hadn't really learned from, from his mistakes, yeah. you know, dealing it was with good, it. It was good to have that story, because you say you had, the, what, they went back to the place, you know, with the dragon, you know, Mr. Mr. Sin was there again, as you say, that Magnus Greel, the, um, what was her name? Uh, uh, Guinevere, to diver, yeah, want, wanted real to live again, um, yeah, and he and he did again because he took over the body of the the policeman, which I thought was quite abrupt the way they did that. Yeah, that well it was, that was yeah, yeah. But um, those were the two stories I did like. So the other two, uh, the, what was it? The third one, the Blood Child Codex, the one where they were searching for the book. Yeah, to me that was very lacklustre. There was not much happening in that one. Well, it, I mean, even even uh, I mean that sort of idea was was present in the um, in the Good Omens stories. You know, mm-hmm. the the w- one part of that story was all about looking for that one book. The 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 you know perfect. Uh, pro- prophecies of, of, you know, Agnes something whatever. Yeah. Um, but this one was the 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 way the the book itself had the had the power to um, to draw you in to the the thing. Mm, and so the first story, the age of the revolution. 
the, the first story, the Age of Revolution, was sort of setting up the box set. Um, you know, getting all the 60s references in and stuff like that. But um, yeah. I don't, just didn't do it. I mean, with the, the idol theme on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it, all in all, it, it's a good box set. It's an experimental box set. Yeah. Um, but for me, as I say, as you well know, it was, these two characters are Victoriana, not yep. not swing not swinging sixties. No, oh, okay. Uh, that's my that's my thoughts on this anyway. Over to you, Susan. Yeah, I um I did like it because I liked I I, I liked it when when we put our characters even from either from right now back in the sixties or from the future back in the sixties or from you know. 200 years ago or 100 years ago back in the 60s because or forward into the 60s because the 60s were such a such a melting pot of different influences it really was the first time that the, the world became one global world and like and like the uni, unifying themes of 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 space and time and tr space travel and time travel and everybody's doing both of those things all the big powerhouses have you know there's a the the British are 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 you guys were were engaging in uh, a lot of uh, build up of uh, of intelligentsia like the the whole the whole fact that that you guys have like the like the the I mean really it, everybody thinks that you guys were all just James Bond. <laughs> you know, or James Bond villains in intel in intelligentsia. You know, that's mm. that that was that that's the way we think of you in the sixties. Is like all that, you know, brilliance Me. and and you, do, you guys still think of us as, as as the villains because all sometimes, the British actors still play the villains. <laughs> sometimes, I mean, yes, Star Wars really <laughs> sort of put that in in cased in carbonite and and gave it to you. But um, I, I feel bad. But not too much because you guys are so funny and so amazingly creepy as villains. Anyway, um, and you know the swinging sixties and the, I mean the fact that that it was uh, that it was still London and stuff like the the the. I mean it's just really great and and I thought so and I and I, you know. Unearthly Child happens to be one of my favorite things ever in the whole wide world, ever history of anything, and um, and that's about it. Somebody from the from another planet, and you know the whole idea of them being really into um, into coming to the sixties UK is is brilliant, actually. So that's why it is, and 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 you know then the two time traveler uh teachers you know they they got they got all you know romantic with each other and then they came back to london 1965 just before the summer of love and, and all of that so you know you know they probably brought that with them you know i i, I blame you know barbara but you know there was a, the fact that that magnus grill was still kicking around and and mr sin was still there i mean that is he's as old as ellie now so you know these guys they're all they're all vampires and stuff. It's, and that, that's fun that Ellie's a vampire. I hope she gets cured someday. Um, I'm not entirely sure that she does, but it doesn't really matter anyway because she's really amazing, and she is like like really the Cockney kid, the Cockney woman. And um, the fact that all of these things, all these meetings that they had in this took place in her bar, and that's where the the great story arc was push forward by a little a little you know debate or discussion in in, in her bar i mean that's mm -hmm. that's really the way it is anyway her pub i mean i mean her pub anyway it's fantastic it's it's really good and ellie is ellie did well as a 60s uh, barkeep uh just just like you know um just like you know she would she really she she uh, figured out how to you know quote unquote regenerate every every so often you know she's like the her she's acting as if she's the 
the great granddaughter of her of her former self, and that's that was discussed. And so, I, I really like Ellie. I you know when I you know when I get into this these you know Jayco and Lightfoot have all all the stuff of of you know they they like a they like a stiff drink and they go to the pub all the time for to get a stiff drink, and isn't that fun? Because that they're I mean one of one of the great best scenes in this was at the end in the last story was with Ellie when they were when they were leaving they were going back getting in the town cabinet and she said oh yes I will see you again but I won't see you again you know saying that they're going back in time so they will meet her again when in the, the younger days but the, the version of her there she'll never see them again I know right well, that, I, mean, I thought that was you know quite uh, Sad. Yeah. So I wonder if she's still, you know, if she's still a bar, a pub owner in uh, of the Bell and the Bell and Ball. What is it? Anyway, I can't remember now. <laughs> so, so anyway, her pub is. is um, I, I wonder if she still owns that, and if she's still, you know, enjoying the the same kind open. of. Uh, also, as well, she knows when those two die. Because she, yeah. she said that. She said, I know when you when you die. and Because uh -huh. she's lived through it. She's lived through the wars. She's yep. lived through the old wars. And... True. Who'd want to be a vampire? I don't know. <laughs> it is hard. Except for those people in in uh, the uh, the Lost Boys, anyway. Um, yeah. So, uh, anything more you want to add about this? It was um, for me. It was a brave experiment. What they did, yeah. Um, but for me, it just didn't. It slightly it just didn't work for me personally, and as for the reason I've given. Um, but say good acting. Some yeah. of the themes of the stories was was brilliant. Um, it was just the setting just didn't draw me in because mm. you've got to, for me, Jay Gunn Lightfoot. You've got to have cobbled streets, foggy nights, uh, you know, coach coaches and gas lights. Yeah, you they know. they did they they did make kind of a big deal about the fact that there was clean burning coal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still like that's not even possible. <laughs> but like whatever, like I know anything about anything. But anyway, I just yeah, I'm just like the, their their realization that they the, the 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 kind of things that they were doing as a as just a society and a culture and in, in the in the late 1800s uh, was perhaps causing damage to the planet. You know, they didn't, they didn't have any idea and about that until, until the 60s. So that's, yeah. And, and then at the end of this, the very end of this, they meet the Colonel and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering who the Colonel is because it well, sounds like, it sounds like a unit thing that's coming. Well, we don't know if they've gone back to that exact time they left. Yeah, do we it. don't know that, do we? Okay. Yeah. We know they've gone back, but when? Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I hope, it, I hope it's not the 1950s. <laughs> right, right. Sort of stepping to the time yeah. with these two, yeah. Yeah, I... I I, I agree, though, you know, there is a lot to be said for, you know, Trevor Baxter and Christopher, uh, Christopher Benjamin being uh, uh, great actors, but they, you know, the, the characters really do belong in, in the late 1800s. I mean, I, I guess I, I, I see that all that point of yours. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, the two stories before this, which we haven't reviewed, we may do at some point. That I don't, I don't mind that where they jumped in the TARDIS and went for two trips with the Doctor. 
Yeah. I, I don't mind that because you see, one was on Earth and one was on Venus. So right. there wasn't set in one period. It wasn't four stories set in one particular time. Right. Okay. You know, so. Yeah. So there was a, uh, in the, the, in the, the stories of the doctor, it was just the one, one adventure. There was two, there was two releases, um, Voyage to the New World and Voyage to Venus or something like that. Okay. And with the sixth doctor. Yeah, it was, it was definitely the sixth doctor who, who, you know, you heard the voice of at one point in this story. Like, yeah, right at the beginning when he dropped them back off. <laughs> but yeah, blame yeah. the tab. <laughs> Do it in the TARDIS. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, so what would you give it out of 10? Um, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, not my favorite book set of them up so far. Um, just because of the couple of stories, what didn't really gel with me. I'm going to give it 7.5. Mm. Peaking humongous out of 10. Mm. Yep. I'm going to say, what's a peaking humongous? Uh, yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. Um, it's, a I, mystic, it's a mystic scene. <laughs> yeah, and I'll give this... Uh, I'll give this... Eight, um, eight fifths, fifths of, of brandy <laughs> out of ten because I thought it was great and I and I really I, I don't fault anybody trying to go to the sixties with whatever science fiction or or fantasy that we're talking about because the the sixties were so cool. And you know, definitely the, the the change of of the universe happened somewhere in the 1960s. And like Hunter S. Thompson says in, in Fear and Loathing, you know, that's where the wave crests and, and hits and goes back. And that's where that wave of change really think, came in. I, I wouldn't have minded if they had set one story in the 60s. But you just didn't like the fact that all four of them were set there. Yeah, because you didn't you didn't vote it down very far. So I mean, you you did enjoy it. I would have, to me, to be honest, if if it was me, I'd have I had four stories, and the was in the first story, I'd have had them found the time cabinet in the first story, and then trying to use it to get back to their time. So each story was in a different time. Oh, okay. And then I wouldn't have to have sat through four stories set in the 60s with two Victorian gentlemen, yeah. which that's the problem for me. Yeah. Call, call me old fashioned. Uh, I'll call you Victorian. <laughs> call me a taxi. <laughs> Very funny. You're, taxi. You're not let out of this meeting. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, so funny. Uh, <laughs> So uh, thanks for watching our, our little podcast on Jago and Lightfoot Series 5, Trevor, Trevor Baxter and Christopher Benjamin and the, the most amazing uh, other cast. And, um, and yeah, so th and this has also been sort of a, a, a surprising Trevor Baxter weekend because apparently we we just reviewed uh, Sky Captain World of Tomorrow where he was actually a character in that so that's fun and, and if you want to come along for this fun adventure with us at Geek Assembled um, just uh, hit up Lee just ask him you know can, can I join and all he got was camera mic and uh, some way of, of joining zoom and and uh 
and that you watch the stuff that we're going to watch and that's it that's pretty much it listen to the, the stuff that we listen to here on audio heads um there's so we're, we've done so many audio adventures it's just amazing and we keep finding more and there's just more and more to do thanks to big finish and bbc audio and oh my gosh just so many other people uh it's just amazing and um and also we'd like to uh invite you to like and subscribe like this video just helps us in the algorithm and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and you'll be uh you'll be notified whenever we as um, uh, our amazing host here is, is putting these videos into the youtube channel and 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 you'll you'll enjoy them you'll get them pre premiered right away you know it'll it'll notify you you can jump on and watch them all and that would be great fun for for you and um let's see what else is is there to say oh yeah um uh that's really all we have today for you chucks uh, <laughs> oh corks oh corks so fun. Jingle Lightfoot are so fun. They are just so fun. They're great. And they are, I hopefully getting back to the Victorian age so so Lee can re reconnect and re-enjoy these things. It's only one box set. It's only one box set, though. So yeah, it's only one box set though. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great one. Bye-bye.